Hi everybody. I have a Friday update for you with a few random items to talk about. Um, the first is regarding our heart patients. I wanted to let everybody know that you see the pre-op orders. We have a huddle topic now to talk about signed and held orders. So um, our heart patients will have sometimes some signed and held pre-op orders. And uh, one of the things in there is the platelet mapping that we need to do. And I wanted to kind of let everybody know that it is purposeful that Sheila and Dr. Bradford order the platelet mapping to happen the day prior to the surgery. And that is because they want to know if there's anything abnormal, then they can repeat it in the, in the morning, sorry. And uh, so just a reminder for any patients going for heart surgery, their platelet mapping is ordered the day before surgery on purpose. Uh, we shouldn't call them and ask if it's okay to do the next morning with morning labs, anything like that. It needs to be done the day before. And then please notify Sheila when the platelet mapping is resulted. And she'll take a look at that just to verify that everything looks okay with that because that is definitely something, if it's abnormal, that could delay a surgery. So uh, that one. Then the next thing I wanted to let you know is we are changing out the magnet on the MRI. I sent you the email about the little mobile MRI that we're using. However, there's a lot of construction, well, you know, moving. It involves a large crane. So um, the back lot, parking lot, I, uh, sorry, behind ICUA lot number seven is not gonna be usable for the next little while. So also the doors to ICUA in the very back we cannot come and go from those doors. So you won't be able to park back there, so there, you're not gonna feel like there's a reason, but um, we can't come in those doors anyways anytime because we have to go through screening. However, we can't go out those doors until that magnet is moved too. So for the next several weeks, please don't use those back doors. They still will work for an emergency, as an emergency exit, but we can't use them for anything else. Um, this weekend we're going to have some epic downtime and when epic comes back up they're just doing kind of uh, updates and stuff there's one new thing I want everybody to be aware of you'll see things are a little different like it always is when they do um, an upgrade but one of the things to be aware of is that some of our notes will now be shared with the patient that means when they log into my chart they will be able to see notes some of the notes now, thankfully, just our general nurse's notes, they are not going to be able to see those. You're not gonna be able to share those with the patient, apparently. Uh, however, our plan of care notes, so most people just do the plan of care and file it away, but sometimes people will add comments and it shows up in a note down at the bottom of the plan of care. And those notes will be shared with the patient. So I'm just telling you that so that you're mindful of what you put in those notes. Um, I think everybody documents professionally anyways, so we should be able to share those things, but just be aware patients may be able to see those things if they log into my chart. So that. Um, our wound care nurses have found when they're rounding on some of our high risk patients or patients who already have pressure ulcers, they found the occasional old quilted chuck, those old fabric quilted chucks that we don't really use anymore. They kind of seem to have found their way back into a little bit of rotation. So just a reminder, those quilted chucks are no good for our patients. They definitely increase the risk of pressure injuries. We don't want to use them. So if you come across those, please just take them out, you know, put them in the laundry. They'll go back to the laundry, but we won't use those for our patients, please. And then finally, the last thing I wanted to let you know about is, uh, along with Dr. Tran and our RT team, we took a look at our intubation boxes, which by the way, we're getting pretty heavy. I like lifted it up to bring it over and I thought, gosh, how do we go to codes with these things? Anyway, so we revamped the intubation box. Uh, we have one for our ICU A, one for B, we always did. However, one thing that we did is we got rid of that difficult airway intubation box and we put everything that we need, even for difficult airways, into the regular intubation box. We put this handy little sign on, or this cute little sign on it 
intubation box. This one's for ICU-B. There's one downstairs for ICU-A. It's organized now. We kind of listed everything that we wanted. In the box, there is a laminated list of everything that's supposed to be in here. And so what we really did is we cut down on having like really multiples of the same thing. And the things that were really making it heavy is tons of blades for the um, laryngoscope and uh, tons of handles in there that was making it heavy. So it's still, it's still not super light, but it's definitely lighter than it was before. Um, and then when we use something out of it, we just need to replace it according to the list. And then we put a handy little sticker on here, which indicates right over here what expires first. And um, I have a process with Alicia to check and kind of make sure that we're good on the expired supplies in here. For now, you'll see a little sticky note on here because there's a couple things I needed to order to get it totally up to par, but these intubation boxes, I think they're better um, than they used to be, so I, I think we're gonna like using them a little bit more. They'll be definitely be more um, user-friendly. That's all I've got. I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. Bye-bye.